Imagine Teen Wolf- no, not that one. Yes, imagine Teen Wolf plus Sabrina, yet somehow make such a concoction more 80s. That's what we're reviewing today, guys, and it's glorious. So without further ado, on with the review. So this movie centers around Louise Miller, a typical high-achieving awkward teenage girl who wakes up to find her little brother hiding under her bed like a total weirdo. They get into an argument because she catches him reading her diary, and he makes fun of her for having a crush on a guy called Brad. Again, this movie is from the 80s, so the cool guy is going to have a typical 80s jock name. The conflict of the little brother reading the diary is a total cliché as well. However, this is the most accurate depiction of a bedhead that I've seen in a movie yet, so props to the movie for that aspect of realism. She meets with her best friend Polly so that they can ride their bikes to school together, and they gossip about Louise's love rival, Randa, in this very typical movie teenage girl way. Can you believe it? How does she do that? Jane's. This will occur throughout the movie. I don't know how accurate this is to real life, to be honest. Do a lot of teenage girls really talk like this? Did they back then? Drink it out time and we're feeling cool. Don't really need to be hanging at school. Oh lord, not these jokers. Okay, remember these guys, they're gonna show up in a very culturally important scene later on. Are you sure you go to high school? <laughs> Says you, you don't look like a teenager either. This is the 80s, remember? Every boy looks like they're on their fourth grandchild, and every girl looks like they're at the brink of menopause. We get another teen comedy standard scene where foreshadowing or a theme in the movie is conveyed in a class, usually where the main character gets humiliated in some way. Louise accidentally hands a page of her diary where she wrote about Brad for her romance-themed English class, and her teacher reads it in front of everyone. It doesn't help that Brad is in the same class too. I felt this scene, I really did. This has never happened to me personally, but for any teenager who has ever liked anyone and has tried to express that in an artistic way in private, this is their worst nightmare. This scene was painful to watch, it really was. In the locker room, the cheerleaders practice their new cheer, which for some reason is about how much they like boys. To be fair, there are a lot of teenage girls who act like this when they're more immature, but I don't know why anyone would make a cheer like this, other than it just fitting the movie's themes of teenage romance and it showing how Louise doesn't quite fit the mould. Then there's a scene where Louise watches Brad doing… American football practice things from a distance I guess? I get that teenagers are dumb and have all these weird feelings going on, but the scene kind of creeped me out, especially when he almost catches her and she moves into the shadow. Like, imagine if the characters were the other way around. In the school production of Ondine, Louise is rejected as the lead, and Brad is cast as the lead male role, Hans, while another popular girl called Kiki is cast as Ondine. This was obviously going to happen for tension and conflict's sake, but this is so painfully awkward. You're killing me with secondhand embarrassment here, movie. That night, Brad is driving home and is distracted by Randa, causing him to almost hit Louise on her bike. In order to avoid being hit, Louise crashes her bike into a nearby ditch. I initially thought Brad was going to drive away, but thankfully, he just stops to check if she's okay. He doesn't remember her name at first and she refuses his help. It's a very uncomfortable interaction to witness on the whole. As one of her tyres is bust, she stops at a creepy looking house, apparently the same one used in the Thriller music video, in the hopes of using the owner's telephone. Sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? I'm glad we caught you at home. Could we use your phone? 
We're both in a bit of a hurry. The person living there is a psychic named Madame Serena, played by Zelda Rubinstein. She says she never uses phones, which makes sense given that she's a psychic, and she reads Louise's palm. Serena discovers that Louise is actually a witch, and reveals that she will start developing strange powers on her 16th birthday. Spooky. On the special day, Polly calls Louise and tells her that Randa is holding a party soon because we have to fill in another teen movie cliché. It's like birthday on Elm Street. It does happen to be on Friday the 13th though, talk about dodgy. Sometime later, Louise's drama teacher finds a weird old necklace and gifts it to her, and just after that, Randa invites her to the party. Kinda strange, huh? Maybe Madame Serena was onto something. Unfortunately though, Randa has arranged for her weird cousin David to be Louise's date to the dance. That's a little bit catty and sly, but maybe Randa just felt bad for her cousin and thought Louise was kind enough to not mind? Louise goes and dolls herself up in the bathroom, and this look is tragically 80s. It has not aged super well. After ditching David on the dance floor, she starts thinking out loud about Brad to Polly, and all of her wishes come true. This is cut short when Randa interrupts and suggests that they go to Kiki's house, but while taking Louise home, David is a total creep, leading to a bit of a magic mishap. I wish you would just leave me alone! <coughs> she goes home and when she gets into an argument with her brother again, she tells him that everything he says to her will reverse back onto him, and he calls her a dog. Yeah, you can see where that's going. She chucks him in the bath for some reason, and the spells wear off, as Louise is only a beginner. Louise visits Madame Serena again, who reveals that Louise is actually a reincarnation of an old friend of hers. She also begins to mentor Louise in some very basic spells, such as turning coal into money, and promises her that she'll help her turn things around at school. Using a spell book, Louise discovers that she can alter the weather, and causes arguments between the popular girls at school by getting them to tell each other their real opinions about one another. With those being a success, Louise decides to make Brad fall in love with her with a spell, which, as you can imagine, can't work out too well. She invites Brad over so that they can study together, but she gets cold feet when trying to cast a love spell. He does seem to get friendlier in class though, simply due to them spending time together, and her helping him study for his finals. The English teacher from before starts picking on Louise again, and she decides that this is the last straw, making a voodoo doll of him that night. Using the doll the next time she goes to class, she forces him to remove articles of his clothing while he is giving a lecture, just as the superintendent walks in. He is forced to leave work temporarily as they assume he's unwell, and a segment where Louise's brother kicks the doll down the stairs, and her mother puts it into the washing machine ensues, with disastrous consequences for the teacher. In contrast to this, Louise gifts her favourite teacher many things, such as winning the lottery and her ideal man. Now, we're getting to the most memorable and possibly the most questionable scene in this movie. I'm hot, and you're not, but if you want to hang with me, I'll give it one shot, top that! The lip syncing isn't doing this scene any favours, not to mention the questionable dancing and lyrics. The dialogue just adds to the ridiculousness of it all too. Look at how funky he is. It's just so out of touch, even for the time, and it gets worse. Louise casts a spell, causing Polly to start a rap battle against the boys. Disconnected, not respected. Who would ever really want to go and top that? Such a waste of pretty face, but hanging in your nose face. I wish that you would take a look and really stop. That. I love his look of outrage as she's approaching him. The whole scene is just comedy gold. I'll get more into the backstory of the scene later. Anyways, back to the story. Louise wants to become the most popular girl in school, so she and Polly sneak into a concert by this in-universe singer called Shayna. Thanks to Louise's magic, she is able to take a piece of Shayna's clothing, which she needs to cast her spell. 
she has a very extreme disguise time moment before the big reveal, where she again looks very 80s. That morning, she rides to school with Brad and Randa and starts hanging out with the cool kids in a montage, but this means that she abandons Polly, seemingly out of nowhere. Brad takes Louise to this abandoned house with nice natural lighting, while slow-paced saxophone music can be heard in the background. Man, this is cheesy! The couple have the classic 80s romance scene with the fade-in shots and stuff. Nevertheless, Louise is not satisfied as she cannot tell whether Brad's feelings are genuine or simply because of her spell. During a dress rehearsal, Louise innocently tells Kiki to break a leg, but because of her magic, Kiki immediately trips and breaks her leg for real. This means that Louise gets the lead role, but she feels guilty as it wasn't by her own merit, and the spell was by accident. After a date on a boat, Brad asks Louise to go to the school dance with him. Teen movie cliché drinking game, anyone? He calls her honest, but this makes her turn him down out of shame. This causes her to return to Serena, who tells her that the real magic is believing in herself, giving Louise enough courage to go to the dance. She takes Serena with her, and I really like her dress here despite the 80s shoulder pads. In a dramatic spotlight scene, Louise relinquishes her powers by returning the amulet to Serena, and the movie ends with her kissing Brad on the dance floor, suggesting his feelings for her were real all along. Okay, despite all the 80s cheese, I do like this movie and I think it's a lot of fun. Apparently, it was actually originally intended to be the female equivalent of Teen Wolf, starring Michael J. Fox, and that makes sense given the title and themes of wanting to fit in as a teenager, and being true to who you are. Apart from that, there is a very obvious theme of romance, I'd call this a fantasy teen rom-com, but there's something about the writing that captures the awkwardness of being an adolescent so well that I can't put my finger on. Even with all the blatant 80s tropes, certain scenes really struck a nerve with me in a way Teen Wolf didn't. I don't know if it's because I didn't find Scott's specific struggles relatable, or that this character is a girl or what. The top that scene became a meme and has been parodied and recreated many times. Hell, before I even watched this movie for the first time I knew the scene. I found an interview on YouTube from not too long ago where the actors look back on the top that scene and explain why it even happened. Apparently, the scene was added after production for the movie had originally ended, because the producers of the movie wanted more scenes that would be hip with the kids, due to rap becoming more mainstream. Even the actors knew it wasn't cool. And I remember the choreographer was like, you know, like, do this, I'm like, really do that? I mean, at least they can all look back at it and laugh. That's the important thing. I like the writing too. Apart from that one thing with her cousin, Randa isn't so mean. She's just a vapid schoolgirl, not cartoonishly evil like some of her counterparts from other movies. I found the cast quite interesting too. Louise's dad, Frank, is played by Dick Sargent, an actor known for his role as Darren Stevens on Bewitched, a show about a housewife who is a witch. Serena is played by Zelda Rubinstein, as I mentioned earlier, who is probably most well remembered for her role as the medium Tangina Barons from the Poltergeist movies. I find both casting choices rather fitting. I highly recommend this movie if you're into that kind of thing, it's definitely worth a watch. Well. That's all for this video, be sure to follow me on social media as they are all linked in my description box, don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching. The blue and green ones are my favourite kind, but I'll eat the coloured ones from time to time, cause Polos is life, Polos is life.